Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome on this Monday night to the flagship first ever episode officially of Grace Out Loud. I'm going to bring my co-host in, Marty Grisham from Loudmouth Prayer. He is going to open up in prayer and we're going to play a fun little game uh, initially and then we're going to go into teaching. So welcome to everybody. Welcome to our moderators and our Ark of Grace team. Hello to Marty's lovely wife, Sarah. I miss the not Sarah. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> It's Jenny. You know what the problem is? I'm thinking about Sarah who works for me and I was about to say Jenny and that's what happened. Jenny, we love you. Jenny actually did the graphics for Grace Out Loud. She's very talented. And now let's bring Marty in. <laughs> hey, Amanda. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm thinking about Sarah who works for me. You know Sarah. Yes, Alex. Sarah. And I was thinking of her because she's on Ark of Grace team. So when I said Ark of Grace team, I was thinking of Sarah. And then I segue right in and Sarah was still in my brain. So. Oh, well, no problem at all. I'll tell you, it's just a, an honor and a pleasure to get to be with you for the flagship of uh, Grace Out Loud. It's really exciting. We have a lot of fun stuff and, and amazing things to talk about tonight, don't we? We have a lot of fun things to talk about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have you open in prayer. Okay, and, good. Uh, then we're going to play a fun little game. I'm still laughing about what I did. <laughs> Jenny, I love you. I know your name. I'm sorry. Um, so we'll open in prayer and I'm going to have Marty do it. Oh, we're well, praise the Lord. And I would like you to do it, Marty. And then we're going to play a fun game called <laughs> Caption This. And I'll explain after we okay. open in prayer. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Marty. All right, Lord, we, Father God, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. <clears throat> and Father, <clears throat> first and foremost, Lord, I, I have no idea what games uh, Amanda Grace has planned, but Father, I'm coming to you from the office of a prophet. And I'm asking you, Father, that no animals are hurt during these games. And Father, I'm asking you in the precious name of Jesus to just reach out and touch the, the hearts and the minds of the hearers of the show, this broadcast, and what we have in our heart to do, Lord, to teach prayer, to teach the things of the Spirit. And Father, in the name of Jesus, to help them, to, to grace them, that they'll be able to come closer to you in the precious name of Jesus, that they'll begin to learn to walk with you and talk with you and have the intimacy in Christ with you that Adam did in the very beginning, that they can walk in the cool of the day, that your voice, they become so accustomed to your voice, the leading of your spirit, that it's just second nature to them. Just like breathing, they'll be talking and hearing from you. Yeah. And Father, we thank you that each and one of those that hear and participate with what we're doing, Father, you have a call and a divine destiny for each one of them. Yes. So we're asking you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, to unclog the things that have kept them from walking in your health, in your wealth, in your goodness, in your greatness for their life in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. So we're going to play this little game first before we yes. get into the heavy duty stuff, right? Called caption this. Now I've got two pictures of things that have gone on around our house recently with the animals. Okay, Marty? And I want you to caption this. So here is picture number one. Now the picture is going to go over our picture for a minute. Okay. So it's going okay. to go over our video for a minute and I'll take it off okay. after you take a good look at it. Okay. Picture number one. There it is. <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> Give me a minute here. This is, I mean, Cat number three in the back is looking at the rear. So I'm really getting in my heart. Give me a second. Okay. Um, wow. Uh, okay. Okay. I'm going to caption that. Yeah. Caption that. Okay. <laughs> caption that is Amanda's vacuum cleaner broke. <laughs> and she's hired the cats and the cats are somehow vacuuming with their bodies. I, I that's, it's a really long caption. What would you caption that Amanda? I would caption that kitty militia. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. What I would caption that. Okay. <laughs> Here's one more. And I think okay. you're going to really like this one, Marty. I think you're going to come up with a good one for this. I hope so. I didn't do good on the last one. Here it is. 
It's Chris playing the piano oh, for wow. Wally while wearing his cowboy hat. Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay. What do you think, Jenny? Oh, yeah. Let's get Jenny in on this. Yeah, what do you think, Jenny? Um, I only have eyes for you. <laughs> getting that in my heart. Um, what is it? His name's Wally. Yeah. Yep. His name is Wally. I just keep getting, I only have eyes for you, but I don't know which one of the two is saying it. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good yeah. job. Okay. <laughs> yep. We had, we took those two pictures this past week in the house and I think we're going to make this a regular thing. I like uh, it. So if you, you guys can do it too. Okay. Um, oh, pictures. Oh yes. This could get very, yeah, that's really good. So why don't I ask you before we start, who is your friend in back of you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, whenever the Holy Spirit has been strong on my podcast, um, Gumbo. Now, this is Gumbo, my bird. and um, Is Gumbo he, a rubber chicken? He's Well, he's a bird. <laughs> he does have a complex. Um, but so his, his full name is Chicken and Sausage Gumbo. But we just call him Gumbo for short. Okay. So, well, you've got Gumbo. I've got Grace the Dove out and about. So we may Grace see. Grace and Gumbo. Yeah. yeah. Grace and Gumbo. There you go. That could be a cooking show. It really Grace could. That's yeah. a good title, Marty. Okay. So I'm getting the notes up here so we can All right. go back and forth here. With what are we it. talking oh, about tonight? We Well, <clears throat> we, are, we are talking about... How does God speak to us today? How does he lead and guide us? How does the Holy Spirit lead us in what we do? How do we hear from the Lord? I'm sure all of this will come up in this discussion. Yes, absolutely. And and the, the, one of the reasons why I like this, <clears throat> this subject so much is because at the end of the day, you know, you, you and I and, and, you know, Chris and Jenny and many of us, the friendships we built, we've been able to talk you know, at different times traveling together and, mm -hmm. you know, loudmouth prayer, our objective is just to is really got bottlenecked down to just teaching the powerful simplicity of prayer, prayer according to the word of God. And there's other things we do, but that's really the main thrust of the heart that we have. And so how can you have prayer if you're not accustomed to how God hears and how God talks what his voice sounds like, you know, how he leads, how he guides. And so that's what really, um, this is the nitty gritty of the entire Christian lifestyle. You know, just being a Christian and being able to open the word of God and read it is only half your life. The other half is being able to fellowship with the spirit, being able to fellowship and have the voice of God. You know, the voice of God wakes you up and gives you whole books to write and paragraphs of, of, of words from God. And the, and the same spirit, the same spirit of God is endeavors to speak to every single person, every believer and lead them and guide them and, and, and speak to them and show them things to come and be their teacher and be their unction. All of these different things, you know, Jude says you have no, no need that a man teach you because you have an unction. Well, that's a, a prompting, a lead, a guide from the Holy ghost. So as a believer, when you receive Christ as your Lord and savior, this becomes a part of who you are. It does become a part of who you are. And if you want, I'll tell a quick uh, account to give an yeah. example. Okay. So this is a pretty interesting account because the Lord, the Lord says in his word, you have not because you ask not. And so I always put the Lord in remembrance of his word first. And I, and I tell him that. So I remember at one point, Oh, about two months ago or so I said, Lord, if there is a predator outside, now I pray them away quite a bit so we don't have too many incidences, but there is a predator outside. Lord, I I want you to wake me up. I'm asking in the name of Jesus so, so I can get out there and intervene and help the animals. Well, wouldn't you know, right, two nights later, I feel like someone is squeezing my arms literally, like really tight to wow. wake me up. And I wake up and I'm going, okay, Lord, I know that was you and I'm up. And all of a sudden I see raccoons flying by our door wow. and they're trying to get into the area where the animals were. And the Lord woke me up. 
hmm. to communicate that to me so I could get up out of bed and intervene. And you've, if you've ever seen me, an Italian chase away raccoons, it's quite comical, and intervened and everyone was safe. So the Lord speaks to us in many ways and wants to help us in many ways. So that's just one simple example, let's say, of something that happened. The thing that's heaviest on my heart right now, Amanda, is just getting a picture for next week of you chasing raccoons. Now that I can come up with some captions for. Yeah. Well, if we can, I, I'll try to get you one. If we can get you one, okay. I, I, I've, I've been known before to uh, get involved with some uh, with feeding some raccoons and doing other things. So we'll see if we can get you that. All right, we'll Photoshop you on some raccoons, riding them with a like a bronco or something. So okay, okay. so. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so the, you know, the new Testament, you know, the new Testament, the new covenant we're in the new Testament, the new covenant, you know, is, is considerably, there's a lot of similarities to the old covenant. You know, there's so many similarities. It just went to that next glorified, wonderful level because of what Christ did. But when you look at Ezekiel, even Ezekiel prophesied in Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, Ezekiel prophesied and said, a new heart also I will give you, and listen to this, a new spirit will I put within you. So God, through Ezekiel, was saying of our, speaking of our day, he said, I'm going to put a new spirit within you. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about learning to communicate with God. We're mm -hmm. talking about prayer. I'm going to keep bringing that up because um, repetition is how we learn, and it's how we get our minds shifted over to seeing things from the God perspective, the right perspective. Well, he said, a new spirit I'm going to put within you in Ezekiel 36, 26. And he said, I'll take away the stony heart of your flesh and I'll give you the heart of heart of flesh. And then he said, I will put my spirit within you. That's in verse 27. So verse 26, he said, I'm going to give you a new spirit in you. And then verse 27, I'm going to put my spirit in you. So we are seeing the second Corinthians five seventeen example of where it says you become a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things pass away, all become new. We're talking about the salvation experience. When you say, Jesus, Romans 10, 9 and 10, you're my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. I just showed you how to get saved. That's how you get saved. When you do that, the Holy Spirit comes and he abides. He makes his abode in you. He begins to dwell in you. He takes, he goes inside and recreates your spirit into a new spirit spoken about here in Ezekiel uh, 36, 26. And so that's that example of in the Old Testament where God was saying, hey, I'm going to show you what's coming in the new. And then John 16, which is the new we're in now, John 16, 7, he said, nevertheless, this was Jesus speaking, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for you that I have to go away now, when by expedient, he meant it's good for you. It's it's an advantage for you. It's profitable yes, exactly. for you that yeah, I go away. Couldn't come unless he went away. Exactly. Unless he went, the Holy Spirit could not come. There was a there was a legal spiritual order. Exactly. Those events. There was a divine order. It had to be done. The Holy Spirit could never be given. I like how you said the legal side of that because God is bound to the legality of His Word. Yes. He was a, just so genius the way He laid it out and the way He laid it out. It literally had to, every step was in order and it was planned. And so Jesus had to go or the Holy Spirit couldn't come. Ezekiel was saying, he's going to come and God's going to put him in you. And now Jesus is saying, I'm fixing to go so that he can come. And then as we see <clears throat> in many other scriptures, as we get into this further and further, we're going to see that the Holy Spirit did come. And when he came, he came inside us upon the new creation the salvation experience is grace back yeah. there. Uh, not only is grace back here, Chris has just walked into the room. Oh no. Chris is. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Chris. I think Chris is stalking us online. Right? Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, he's got a do rag on. <laughs> Isn't it gang? Oh, Hey brother. Hey buddy. Uh -huh. It's, Good to see you. Good to Tri see you, brother. Yes. Righteousness. Yeah, he calls. Yes, righteousness. he calls me righteousness. He does. And I, it, I call this my <laughs> beloved brother, my beloved yes. brother. <laughs> it's a step up from the names you first had for each other. Let me. Yeah, just say, it is it's an enormous. Yeah. Move in the right direction. 
the last trip, Chris had to correct me. I wanted to go back to the old names. He's like, no, no righteousness. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, Chris. And he is, he is Chris, the beloved. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. Chris, the beloved, full of love. I, I saw you, I saw you so speaking about a Holy Spirit and, oh man. And he I, took have, off running upstairs, Marty. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a lot tonight, uh, yes. Brother Chris, about the about the Holy Spirit. Good to, you. Good to see you. I love you, buddy. That's his cameo for the night. Yeah, yeah. You've got a Chris cameo, everyone. You're welcome. Go nice. on. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, on. so where are we, Amanda? Um, we are John sixteen seven. Yeah, John sixteen seven. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Jesus said, "I'm going to go away. I have to go away, so the Comforter will yes. be given to you." Um, but if I do go away, I will send him unto you, he said. And so there's a divine order that Jesus had to leave. Now, once again, I'm going to remind everybody, we're talking about conversation with God. We're talking about communication with God, constant contact with God. That's One right. of my favorite words of mention instead of the word prayer is we're talking about fellowship. Mm -hmm. I want the hearers. I want those that listen to grace out loud. I want them to learn to hear the voice and the direction and the leading and the guiding and the unctions and the promptings and the still small voice and the inward witness. I want uh, any way you want to say it, the conscience, I want them to hear God. I remember years ago I was uh, in Louisiana. I was in my twenties and I was looking at getting a job down in South Louisiana. I lived up in North Louisiana and I was looking at getting a job and I got in my truck. And I was going to drive three hours away to go to this job interview on a Sunday. They were only could interview me, interview me that day. I get in my truck. I drove about 10 miles on this long trip and I started getting sick, really sick. I'm like, really just felt horrible. So I turned around. I drove home, parked my four drive in the truck because, you know, I was in Louisiana. I had a, I had before a drive. I walked <laughs> to the front door of my house and I grabbed the doorknob. And when I grabbed the doorknob of my home to walk inside, to call the guy to tell him I'm not coming. When I grabbed the doorknob, all that yucky, like I was going to just really just felt it all flew away, just like flipping a switch. It literally shocked me. I took a step back and I just knew that was God being very gracious to me because God is not, according to his word, he's not bound to lead us through that great yucky, you know, to give me that great warning. He, it leads us and guides us a much quieter and much softer than that on the inside. But because I was a spiritual baby and I was kind of silly and I wasn't praying and seeking his face, he showed up and uh, upon a time, sometimes he can show up out of a great grace and still do things for babies, right? You know, like sometimes you got to cook a little extra for baby and clean up extra for a baby. But when they get a little older, they're responsible for themselves to start doing things. And so that's what I was doing. I was just this baby and God showed up and had me feel yucky about a situation to lead me and guide me to not go down there and take that job. And then two months later, I took a job that he wanted me to have up in Arkansas. And it turned out to be a good church there, made some good friends there and a good pastor and his family took me in and sent me to own to Bible school. So all those things happened, but God showed up and did the unusual for me. And he can do that up on time. But the majority of the time we should always want the highest and best. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. What's the highest and best of how he leads us and guides us. Well, what is the highest and best of how he leads us and guides us? Yeah, I know oh, it's yeah. an interesting way to say it. About the ways? Well, yeah, I want to hear what you have to say about this. Okay, so if you go to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Okay. And basically, Romans 8.11, just to, well, Romans 8.14, actually. Romans 8.14 <clears throat> In oh, the King James. I'll put up Romans 8.11 first if you want to read it. How about that? Yeah, we'll, we'll read that one real quickly. Okay. Romans 8.11. If the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised up Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Through his spirit who dwells in you. 
through his spirit who dwells in you. So if the spirit of God that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and then at the end of this verse, because the spirit of God dwells in you. So we know now Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27 has been fulfilled. He came, he's now inside us. Then we go a few verses down to Romans 8, 14. Same thought. Mm -hmm. The writer Paul writing to the church in Romans is still in the same context. And he goes on to say in Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they're the sons of God, as many as are led. So the question comes, how does God lead and guide? What, how does the number one way that God talks to us today? Now, honestly, I don't, my Bible is on my bookshelf right here behind me, but if I have it, I, if I had it, I'd shake it at you. could probably have one to shake. You got this big one. Oh gosh. It's the world's biggest pink Bible. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it's like, I've never even seen a Bible and it's the world's biggest pink Bible. Yep. There it is. Yeah. So the world's biggest pink Bible is how God leads us today. What is yes. in that thing? Look like you got they dinner in there. Like is, for certain of, part, like Isaiah. I have Isaiah 60 saved. I have Zephaniah 3, uh, Zechariah 3. So, yeah, I've got some sticky notes in here right now. I've never even heard of Zephaniah. <laughs> so, so. So, so basically, as many as are led, Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God. So we see from that verse that God is, is one who wants to lead us. Yes. If you could real quickly pull up, um, oh, what's that scripture? Is it um, John 16, 13? Oh, if yeah. you have that one. Yep. This is one of the first, John 16, 13. This is one of the first scriptures that really, really got me and started talking to me about what God does and what the Holy Spirit. Would you like me to read it? Yeah, that'd be great. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Yes. So basically the Holy Spirit, his role in our life as a spirit of truth is to guide us. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, when he's come. Now we know he's come because when you get born again, he lives inside you. That's and right. so how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, comes inside you, he becomes your guide. And then when you look at Romans eight fourteen, it says as many as are led by the spirit of God, their sons and daughters, they're born again. They're children of God. The children of God should always expect to be led by God. So we're talking about the number one way that God speaks to us. Now, if you were to hold up the big pink Bible, that's why I said that while I go, that's really the number one way that everyone has a lead and guide of God, because mm -hmm. that word of God is him speaking to us. Yes, but, it is. Yeah. But outside of that, mm -hmm. To talk directly to us, the number one way he does that is to lead us and to guide us, Romans 8, 14, and then um, John 16, 13. For how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you, guide you into all truth, speaks not of himself. Whatever he hears the Father and Jesus say, that he'll speak to you and he'll show you things to come. Amen. And, you know, I say about the word a lot that this is the real soul food, that fried chicken yeah. and grits. And collard greens are wonderful. They are. I don't know if Dr. Sherwood would think so, but I know the people in the South love it. But this is your soul food right here for your soul to thrive, for it to be rooted, to hear the voice of the Lord. You have to feed it this. Absolutely. It's the foundation of everything about the Christian life. You yes. know, it comes before the leading of God. It comes before the move and the spirit of the spiritual things because the Holy Spirit and all the spiritual things are all founded and grounded upon the word of God. So the word of God is the foundation that everything else works off of. So some people go chasing after the spiritual things of God without the word foundation, and they get off in a whole bunch of silly things and they can familiar spirits. They can start getting off on many different things. And so once again, what are we talking about? Fellowship, communication, talking with God, prayer. That's what prayer is. And so what we want to do is we just want to get this basis 
that the word of God and that God speaking, leading and guiding us is absolutely the basis for our relationship with him. It is. And, you know, I go back to something Kim Clement said when you talk about how people aren't grounded in the word and then they go off into silly things. He used to say the words may be right, but the breath is wrong. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right words, wrong breath. Like the, like when Paul was being followed by that girl that practiced divination yeah. and made all that money for her masters, the demons were speaking out of her saying that these are the servants of the most high God. And what was being said was correct, but the breath was wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and so, I mean, <clears throat> really, I mean, it's like the, the negative or the twisted and perverted demonic version of the prophetic, you know, I mean, they're picking up on some truth. They're picking up on some, some tomorrows. They're picking up on utterance. It's just demonic utterance instead of divine utterance. You know, the prophetic is, uh, someone speaking divine utterance and promptings at the moment coming to them and through them. And that's what she was doing, but it wasn't divine. It was demonic. It was just a different spirit. Exactly. So, so the, we, <clears throat> I call those people, those are corrupted prophets. You, those are, those are the gift God gave them. Uh, the enemy has taken and corrupted it for himself. And this is why it's so important to have a dividing line between you and thus saith the Lord. Like people know, when it's Amanda from the city talking, because God does not sound like a Bronx Italian, I can assure you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've got well, the voice of the Lord. He doesn't sound that way. And when it switches over yeah, and the entire speech changes and what's being mm. said changes and it becomes thus saith the Lord. It's very important to have that dividing line. Um, otherwise, yeah. sometimes things could get skewed and you don't know the source it's coming from. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and when the voice of God comes and you know this very well too, it's authoritative. It um is. like so just recently I had about an hour and 20 minutes one night, hour and 15 minutes where yes. the person came on me really strong and he talked to me about a lot of different things and Jenny and I were just in bed. It was two o'clock in the morning and it was just, you know, both she and I just had this really interesting encounter with the Lord and you could just completely tell when it was me speaking versus him. Although I was speaking prophetic, it was still unction coming from him, but it was coming, it was prophetic asking him questions. And then he would authoritatively answer it with a completely different voice. It was stronger and it was authoritative. So it's just this, it was this really interesting, just banter back and forth of this, this special time where he, you know, praise the Lord. I, I love those moments like that. Um, and so, yeah, so the voice of the Lord is very distinct. And so that's from a pro prophetic perspective, but the voice of the Lord is also very distinct in leading us and guiding us. And here's why the next verse that we want to go to is Romans eight 16. Uh, do you have that one pulled up? Let's see. Yep. Right here. I have Romans eight 16 and I can get it up if you would like. Romans 8, 16. I have my right here. I have Bible gateway up, so it's very easy. Okay. It says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Absolutely. That's such a good scripture. So two verses before, it says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, so the spirit of God will lead you. Two verses later here in Romans 8, 16, he's telling you how he leads you for the spirit of God himself bears witness with you. He's leading you. He's on the inside. He's bearing witness with your spirit. Now, Paul writing in the church to the church of Thessalonica, um, he said, I pray thy whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. Three parts to man. So there's, so this is, we're just basically covering the basics tonight of what fellowship with God looks like. And these things need to be known. And so we are a spirit. We have a soul, which is a mind, will, and emotions, and we live in a body. So many people get stuck just in the soul. So many people get stuck just in the body. They do. And the enemy loves to take root in the soul. That's where he really likes to till the soil and he likes to plant his seeds and he likes to really have it grow like weeds 
uh, in the soul. That's where that all takes place. And may I say, your internet's amazing tonight. Because we got cable. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited for you. Thank you. Yeah, so it's a clear picture. Yes. It's a bit, I should have had confetti. You know those little poppers for New Year's oh, Eve? I should have yeah. We'll do it next time. We'll do the, the, the okay. grand unveiling and, and we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do the grand unveiling. That's good. Yeah. Oh, there's Grace. She has just appeared in view. <laughs> I can't believe you have a rubber chicken in back. <laughs> Grace, where are you? Grace, yep, she's walking around. She may fly up. You never know. Sometimes when you say Holy Spirit or Covenant or something, the bird just goes, whoop, oh. lands on the yeah. chair. Mm -hmm. um, gumbo normally flies in when you say mashed potatoes, <laughs> um, cornbread. You I know, think stuff, a lot stuff of people like would fly in for that. <laughs> I know, right? I would. <laughs> yeah, so Gumbo, he's a good one. He He's very easy to take care of. We just throw it in our dog with our dog. And she takes care of it every night. <laughs> Got some little marks on him. So that's your dog toy. That's the I dog just, toy for the dog. Well, no, that's what some people would say, but we go, I mean, we've grown very close. So Okay, good. Well, that well, we're happy to have Gumbo with us. I didn't want to show up and not be able to be on, you know, the same prophetic bird equal level of you. You know, I wanted to be able to bring the, the feathers of a, the birds of a, the prophets of a feather flock together. I don't know. I'm looking for something here, but yeah, yeah. I wanted to bring something to, you know, so yep. gumbo. Look, so gumbo looks good back chicken, there. Go on. Chicken, full name is chicken, chicken and sausage gumbo. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I don't even know where we were. We were talking about the precious spirit of God. Romans eight fourteen says he leads you. Romans eight sixteen says how he leads you. He bears witness with your spirit. Okay, let's just break down some things here. He doesn't bear witness with your body. So you go off and get really hungry for some gumbo or for some spaghetti and meatballs. That's not your spirit hungry. That's your body's hungry, and that's your body leading you. And if you're just like wanting to cry because someone was mean to you today, and you're that might be your soul being led around and drug around. But the spirit of God leads us in the real us. We are a spirit. We, our, our identification is we are a spirit. We, are. we have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. We live in this temple, this sanctuary, this body, this walking around Ark of the Covenant that now carries around the Spirit of God with it. So Ark of the Covenant with two legs and two arms, you know. So the Spirit of God bears witness with us on the inside, in our inward man. And that's the number one way he leads us. So what we want to do is we want to develop how do we develop? We want to develop how to hear, recognizing his leading. The more we do that, I'm telling you, your prayer life gets better. Everything gets better in your fellowship and your constant contact, or your constant contact with him, everything, your conversation, your communication. It just gets better because you're learning to hear his voice. Yes. You know what I pray every day? One of the things I pray every day when I ask the Lord to fill me is that I would have the precision and accuracy in the name of Jesus Christ to hear his voice, know his voice, and as strangers, I will not follow. Every day I pray yeah. that because yeah. the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. Moses knows my voice. Moses, our Passover lamb. I oh, yeah. Born on Passover. He knows my voice. When I call for him, he comes tearing up the hill at me and I got to pray. He, he, you know, he breaks and doesn't just run, just ram me to the ground, but he comes when, cause he knows. He, <laughs> I can't even. It's on your head. All I said was Moses. It took my sheep, know my voice and it's strangers. They will not follow. This bird, I'm telling you, is anointed because she does this at the most insane times. And if Chris is watching right now, he should be coming up those stairs in about two minutes to get the dove off my head. Because this is what happens when we talk about the Lord and his voice and his leading. The Holy Spirit comes and rests. I so envy your relationship with your bird. With your dub, Gumbo has never done that. Uh, never. Yeah. So, but you know what? It's interesting because she represents the Holy Spirit. So, at the most incredible times, 
And like clockwork, because we've been married for 14 years, and I know my husband, he is coming up the stairs to relieve <laughs> me. Okay. There he is. <laughs> I can't believe she did this. No, Chris is going to try. Okay, there we go. There she goes. Thank wow. you, Chris. Bird Wrangler. Bird <laughs> Wrangler and, and uh, husband of 14 years. That's his title. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, this bird does this at the most incredible times. I've said the word covenant before. She's done it. Clay Lotus. said Holy Spirit when I was on with him. She came and perched on my chair right behind my head. It's quite amazing. Well, yeah, the last time we did a show, uh, I can't remember what was said, but she did the same thing. But mm -hmm. this time, I've never seen the head mounting. I mean, that was glorious. You should have seen your face, Marty. <laughs> I'm sure I'll go back and look at it later. So Okay. <laughs> Jenny's probably hysterical right now. Okay, <laughs> let's continue. Who glory. So, well, there's another scripture. I guess we'll go back to a scripture. There's another scripture, Proverbs 20, 27. Now, Marty, why are you reading all these scriptures? Why are you doing this? Well, because I want to establish the ability to believe, to have faith on what we're talking about. It would be really nice if I just come in and, and Amanda came and we just shared these things, but we want to share what God says about these things. Our beliefs are based upon the word of God. So we want to be able to portray that or project those beliefs to you. And the only way to do that is just to show you what the Bible says. So yes. Proverbs 20, 27 says the spirit of man is a candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. It didn't say the mind. It didn't say the brain. It didn't say the soul. It didn't say the body. It says the spirit of man, the inward man, the real you on the inside, the you that's eternal. Like if your body passed away from old age or whatever, your body in the season we're in goes into the ground, right? And your spirit is eternal. Now your soul is connected with it. It is eternal too. But um, but your spirit man is the real you. And so yes. it goes either up or down. And it's eternal. It never ceases to exist. It might it might embrace death which death in its purest form means separation from god so if you go to hell you're embracing death that's separation from god but you're not embracing non-existence because eternally you live forever as far as that's concerned so the spirit of man is the candle of the lord meaning that's how he enlightens us leads yes. us guides us and directs our path you have anything to say along you know the enlightened part that bringing light into our life well, the Lord, he, he he said himself, Jesus Christ, he said he is the way, the truth, right? Yeah. And, and the light. And no one who, uh, whoever comes to the Father has to come through him, basically. No one comes to the Father except through him. We are supposed to be, this is why I find interesting um, the whole shield of faith as, aspect with the armor of God. Because yeah. the sh shields reflect light. So we are supposed to be light reflectors. You know, when you have light reflectors on bicycles, right? And yeah. when it's dark out, they're not there for when it's dark out. So the light reflectors work when it's dark. And so when it gets dark and someone's on the road with a bicycle, those light reflectors go off in the darkness. So, you know, there's light there. Yeah. We, that's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be moving light reflectors that are emanating the light of God in the darkness in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And that's like stars. Stars are the same way, you know, or planets that, that just reflect like our moon. Our moon's not glowing. Our moon's reflecting, you know, but it can get pretty, pretty bright at night, you know. And so, yeah, absolutely. So the reflecting, that's who we're to be. We're to be, he'll, he'll lead us and guide us on the inside. He'll, he'll speak to us and lead us and guide us and, and, and bear witness with us, as it said. And that's the number one way outside of reading the word. That's the number one way he'll speak to you. And so we want to develop that. You know, I remember about six, seven or eight years ago, it was a few years ago, I was going about the day and the Holy Spirit just gave me a witness about mm -hmm. something he wanted me to do. And I have to say, Amanda, it was so quiet, so gentle. I, I say it was like dropping a pin on the floor. It was just so gentle of a leading. It was so gentle, and I heard it and picked up on it. And I knew what that meant because I've been a steward. I've been a student of this for, for 20 years. I've been studying this 
these scriptures, these are the main scriptures I've lived my life off of. I'm not sharing these because, you know, hey, they're, they're, the, they're the new fad. This I've lived this for years and years, having these scriptures in my heart, learning how to hear his voice and be led by him throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year. And so it's like a small pin dropped, but it was such a steel, quiet leading and witness from him that it literally stopped me. And I said, whoa, Holy Spirit. That was the quietest, most gentlest you've ever led me in my life. And I heard it. And he said, you're growing. I'm like, oh, I'm growing. I tell you, nothing made me happier than to hear that I was growing in this thing that I've sought to perfect, that I've sought to, to, to develop in my life because it is literally just the, the essence of my relationship with him. You, you know, growth is an interesting thing with uh, the Lord because growth doesn't come from easy circumstances and it doesn't come, yeah. you know, from things being totally easy. But if you think about a seed being dropped into the darkness in the ground, that seed then has to push itself and fight towards the light to bud. Yeah. And then once it buds and the light is on it, it really flourishes and grows. Yeah. And so, and sort of the same way with us. And yes, as we grow, we become more sensitive to the voice of the Lord. So it doesn't take him uh, coming in and knocking us totally flat on our face. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I need yeah. you to listen. It becomes a gentle prompting that we learn to recognize and even through the noise we learn to recognize it. And that's important. Yeah. Being able to recognize God through the noise of this world. That's very it. Very important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With all the chaos and all the crazy going on and talks of famine and are we going to have food and run fast and buy all the precious metals. And I mean, there's so many things and I'm, I'm not saying good nor bad on any of them. I'm saying as many as are led by the spirit of God, that's what we look to. What we look to, and people ask me all the time, should I go stock up on two years of food? Be led, get before him, follow your heart. What what are you getting on the inside? You know, um, one one man of God said it was almost like whenever he would think about look, so let's let's get in the nitty gritty of of being able to help people understand what it what it means to hear that witness, that leading. One man said um that a minister said that when he went to obey God. Because he, he felt like the Lord was t- telling him to go pastor a, a church in a certain area of the, st- of the state. Um, and the Lord spoke to him and spent some time talking to him about it because the Lord wanted to teach him what it meant to have that inward witness, that bearing witness. And the Lord spoke to him and said, when you think about that church, do you notice that you just feel warm and good on the inside? And it seems like you almost have a green light on the inside. The Lord said, that's what the bearing witness I'm doing to you. I'm giving you a good feeling about it. It just seems right to do that thing. And so a lot of people, they'll go off and they'll come up with their own plans. And it's called man's plans versus Mm -hmm. following that green light to what seems good on the inside. Man's plans get wrapped up in the soul. They get wrapped up in what man wants, the mind, the will, the emotions of the situation. Oh, I'm so emotional. I know hard times are coming. Let me go buy five years of 25-year food. Hey, listen, I have food. I've got some 25-year food in my home. You know, I followed my heart. I don't have a whole lot, but I've got, I just followed my heart. And I, I'm not going to let anyone condemn me on that. And I'm not condemning anyone else for what they want to do. I want to tell everyone, follow your heart as he leads you and guides you. Going buying gold and silver. Follow your heart as he leads you. Learn to be developed in that because he might lead you differently than he leads the guy right next door to you because you're two different people, you know? Um, So it's just learning to be led by the spirit of God and what seems right, but you have to walk with him. Remember that, remember John 15, seven says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, that's what I'm talking about. You will develop hearing his voice and that that witness on the inside as you abide and you let the word abide and then you abide and you let the word abide 
and you're growing accustomed to his voice. That's right. And as you grow accustomed to his voice, uh, you also grow accustomed to when, and I've grown very accustomed to this over the years, when the Lord is pressing on me and saying, stop. Yes. And checking me and going, don't do that. Or you need to stop and pray about this. Yeah. You need to wait on me and seek me. Or he gives you a check about something. You're like, okay, I'm checked here. I know, I feel it's almost like a pressure in my spirit of him going, stop. Uh, and so you learn to recognize the difference yeah. between the go and the stop. Yeah, for sure. And you got a green light go and you get a red light stop. And that's what that Lord said to that gentleman. That minister said, do you remember that other time that you were thinking about doing something and you felt like you had a red light to not go for it? It just didn't seem right. It felt yucky. It just felt kind of, ugh. Yeah. Is that a yeah. word? Could you type up, ugh? Could you I type could, that up? I'm going to do it while we're, I'll put it up as a banner. Okay, cool. Yeah, put up, ugh. Because that's that could that could well be Greek. I mean, that's probably a Greek word. It's either a Greek word or it's an Italian cooking word, right? Um, Amanda. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, right. you, I'm so interested in seeing how this comes up. Oh, oh that's it. Holy, <laughs> you that was so prophetic. You got the right number of K's and everything. <laughs> oh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> that's when you're not supposed to do something. That's the red light. That's the, what he said to Amanda, go pray about this. Get mm -hmm. before me. They that wait before the Lord shall renew their strength right. to be led in the things that he wants you to do and to not do the things he doesn't want you to do. Just growing sensitive to him. That's right. And the more sensitive you grow, the, the more detailed instruction the Lord can give you. And, yeah. and in a way, the more you are really steered, you know, hearing him whenever you turn to the right or to the left and hearing yeah. him in every area of life and how you're steered and directed, which needs to come in line with the will of the father. For yes. things to fire on all cylinders in your life. That's when it happens. When the two align like this and you're led, everything starts all, all of a sudden the floodgates open and things start firing on all cylinders. It's because you've now aligned with the will and you're listening to the will and you're going forth in the will. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's such a beautiful alignment. I love how you said that such a beautiful alignment when our spirit gets in line with his spirit. I got a scripture here. I don't know if you will want to pull it up. Romans nine, one. Okay. Let's see if I have it here. If not, I'll just, I'll put it up. I don't know if I, uh, if I had I can prepared pull it you up. for that one. Scripture here. I'm just going to add it first and then I will go pull it up because I have Bible gateway open. Okay. It's Romans nine, one, right? And by the way, at any moment, Jenny's probably going to come up because we've been married 20 years and it takes her about 50 minutes to come up and get gumbo when he's in my way. So anytime now you'll see Jenny come in and she's going to take gumbo. Well, good. Cause we love Jenny. So let's see if she comes up to take gumbo while I'm reading this. Okay. It says, I tell the truth in Christ. I am yeah. not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. Yes, man. I love this one. This, this scripture is so beautiful because it talks about my conscience. Now real quickly, don't turn there, but just acts 21 acts 23, one Paul says, earnestly beholding the council, you know, he was before the council. He yes. said, men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. So once again, two times, Paul's referring to conscience. The Romans nine, one is a really good scripture to see what he's saying. My conscience, the conscience is the voice of your spirit. So there's these different voices. You have the voice of the spirit of God. Yes. You have the voice of your spirit and you just have this, this leading just, it seems right. You know, it just seems right. It's almost like Amanda, you know, God will give you a prophetic word and it comes in words because that's what prophecy is. Prophecy is divine words that comes from God to you 
and it's words, because if you're just mumbling, you know, I mean, you can groan in the spirit, but we will talk about that another time, but that's not prophecy. Prophecy is something that comes at the moment to be spoken at the moment. Mm -hmm. And but you know what? He can also bear witness with you something as a prophet through the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, mm -hmm. or you can see into the realm and know something by the discerning of spirits. Well, that's not prophecy because it didn't come to you as words. Prophecy is words that comes to you, but you and but the, and it can give you revelation to know something, but then also he can through the word of word, word of wisdom or word of knowledge just tell you something that doesn't necessarily come in words, and you'll know it just as real and as clear as you would with prophecy. But they're different types of gifts that operate different ways. This is one way that he leads us and guides us. The first way. Foremost, I like to say is just the word of God because everyone understands that. And really, the second first way to me is he bears witness with us. That's yes. where we saw in Romans 8, 14 and 16. This is really a third way. This way, it is our spirit speaking to us. Our spirit, the voice of our spirit is our conscience. So our spirit will literally say something to you. And I've had this happen so many times. Yes, uh, I've had it happen to me many times. And uh, it's, and you're right, sometimes it's a knowing, you know, it, it, it drops yeah. in your spirit and you know. And then other times the Lord gives you utterance. And it's yeah. happened to me in many ways. Sometimes I'll just say it right there, like the Spirit of the Lord will hit me and I'll just take off like a rocket when I go mm -hmm. into it, I go into flow. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a personal word for someone where the Lord gives me right there. Uh, what's going on with them or, or or where, you know, a direction that maybe they need to go in and they need to be led in. Uh, and so I've had, I've had both happen to me uh, actually. And so, or it, it, the spirit of flow in a way, like it happens and I'm writing it down. So immediately the Lord is filling my spirit and I'm typing up exactly what he's saying. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So at the end of the day, we want to learn to develop his leading and his guide. And I, I have to say one of the biggest things you, one man of God, he said this, um, he, he actually tells a story. I think I'll tell the real short story. He talked about this guy that came to church. Uh Oh, Oh my God. What is it? What's Chris doing? Chris is wearing a shirt. And uh, did you give this to him? Is that the gumbo shirt? Gumbo is my favorite yes, season. Wait, stand up. Let's, let me let's see it for a minute before. Is he, he's wanting. He's asking for gumbo with a bowl. Gumbo. Oh, is I love that shirt. Food. Yes. <laughs> I gave him that shirt. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. It's a great Thank shirt. You. Yes, I'm trying to get gumbo. He's trying to get gumbo from you. Oh, I know. I saw the bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. If you guys come up over the next few months and we do a meeting, you yes. will get a lot of gumbo. There you really? go. Really? Yeah. This uh -huh. big. You like you promise. Well, we got him on I, camera now, Chris. So <laughs> I promise in front of the whole nation, I will all make you the best all gumbo. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness, Chris. <laughs> I did not know he even had that shirt. I haven't seen that shirt in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he found it, Marty. Well, he found it. Now the whole world has seen it. So, well, I did not know that when I introduced him to gumbo, because I think I did not make a gumbo or an etouffee or. You did. You oh, made a gumbo. I think we made right? a gumbo when we uh, came to. Oh, was yeah. it? No, we came to Oklahoma. He made yeah. the gumbo. Tulsa in December of, yes. of last year. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was delicious. Oh, Chris so ate good. almost the whole thing. I mean, Chris ate a lot of that. He really yeah, loved it. Two or three helpings. Yeah. Yes, he did. At least. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, Mark. <laughs> so okay. go on with your story now. I'm starting to get really hungry. I don't know. My gumbo's don't look little, don't look gumbo's the looking pretty good back here. Whew. Yeah, like I say, at any minute, because I've been married 20 years, my wife's gonna show up. Any minute it could happen that she could come get gumbo. So Okay. okay, so I have no idea where we were. Oh, you were you were telling a story about I think it was with church and a, a gentleman and I don't remember the story now. You do. <laughs> Chris and his gumbo. 
It was, it was going to be a lot. A lot of people would have gotten delivered by that story. It would have been really good. It was 16 years ago, right? Or some, maybe not 16 years ago. You said something like that. Oh uh, yeah. Jenny, remember? No, nobody remembers. I'll just make up another story. Okay, go on. <laughs> yeah. So praise God. Um, so God, so let's just get in, let's just get into unction. Let's get into utterance about it. You know, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they're the sons of God. If you're a son or a child, son or a daughter or a child of God that's received Christ, you can make a demand upon the lead. Now, see, I'm getting into unction now. I'm getting over in my spirit. I'm speaking out of my spirit now. Yes. You can make a demand upon God leading you and guiding you. You know, this scripture here in Romans 8, 14, I'm feeling it just kind of coming up out of me now. Praise the Lord. You just kind of unleash it, you know, let it out. But because uh, it's so much in there, you know, but Romans 8, 14 is a promise, you know, we, we can grab a hold of the promises of God and we can stand on those. So you might be saying to yourself, man, my marriage is hard, man. I, I got to figure out what am I going to do about my marriage? Lord have mercy. What am I going to do about my children or my grandchildren? They're not living for the Lord. How am I going to take care of this? How am I going to, I need a new job. All of, there's so many things that people need the direction from God from. They can go to Romans 8, 14 and Romans 18, 16, and they grab those because did not God say that you should put me in remembrance, put me in remembrance of my own word. So you take Romans 8, 14, you take Romans 8, 16, you grab those, you hold them back up to him and say, you said that you lead me and guide me because I'm your child. You said you bear witness with me on the inside because I'm your child. I need that. So I'm drawing that I'm making, now don't, don't take this out of contents, but I'm just saying you can make a demand upon the promises of God by faith. So you can just begin to say, so in the name of Jesus, in this problem that I've got, my God is leading me because the word says so in Romans eight fourteen, my God, the spirit of God is guiding me and I make a demand upon it in my life. You're not demanding of him. You're just standing in faith on the word, demanding the circumstances shut their mouth compared to you and the strength that you're having standing on the promise of God. You're so convinced and settled on the word of God that says he will lead you and he will guide you that you're not going to be moved by what you see. You're not going to be moved by what you feel. So see, we're getting a little preachy here, but this is what, this is the, this is how you take this and you make it yours. You're not going to stumble in being led by the spirit of God during the hard days, during the rough times. Sometimes you've got to just put a demand on it. You get those scriptures and you feed on them and you get them inside. Listen, Amanda, I drive down the road and say, thank you, Lord. I'm led by my, your spirit. You lead me and you guide me. You bear witness with me. I am your child. I know your voice. Like you said about John 10, you're the great shepherd. I know I'm your sheep. I know your voice. This is what I do. This is what you do. I know you do this. You building yourself up in what the word says. Yes, you do. And, and putting the Lord in remembrance of his word is so important. Mm. Because so he wrote it. He's bound to it. So this is why I tell him, well, Lord, you said we have not because uh, we ask not. So I'm asking now in the name of Jesus, because your word says that. Yeah. You stand on that. But you do. You build yourself up into it. You speak the word into the vein of a situation to cause the direction of it to change. Yeah. Uh, because this is living and active. It's living. It's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating to the dividing line. Yeah. Of soul and spirit of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And, and I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you what God does. He's sitting there on the throne, has his hands in his lap. He's sitting there on the top of all of creation. Mm -hmm. Glory and magnificence. He's sitting there and he's looking at you. And you're sitting there and you're beginning to say the word over yourself. And you're beginning to say, no matter the situation, I know God leads me and guides me. I thank you, God. So that's what you're saying. You're bringing your word back to him and he's just sitting there. And after about the 15th or 25th time you do that, he starts smiling. And a little corner of his cheek kind of goes up a little bit because he starts, oh, ha, ha, ha. He gets happy, see, because the Bible said in Hebrews, without faith, it's impossible to please him. But the flip side of that is in faith, in his word, you do please him every single time. So when you begin to bring his word back to him, 
Oh, he starts to grin on one side and then the other side. And the next thing you know, he's probably tapping. He's probably hitting, you know, he's probably tapping on. He's getting excited because he sees a child growing up in the maturity of standing on his word when circumstances say they can't. When circumstances say the word's a liar, this child of his is saying, no circumstances, you're the liar. The word is true because it come from my sweet, glorious father sitting on the throne. And then next thing you know, he's ready to stand up. He's ready to stand up and send out 10,000 angels on your behalf because you've pleased him. That's why we stand on the word. That's why when a situation that looks bad, you say, God, I need you to lead me out of this situation, and he'll lead you. But you have to believe the word. You do. And faith is a verb. It's yeah. an action. There yes. has to be an action with faith yeah. uh, in order for it to function and operate the way the Lord intended it to. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the ways the enemy... Uh, tries to stop this is to affect our faith level to bring it down because then things start coming out of here our yeah. mouth that shouldn't and death and life are in the power of the tongue and he gets us to work against ourselves so we always have to keep our faith level up even yeah. if we see things that frustrate us because god is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And when you diligently seek him in these circumstances and your faith level comes up, you see the direction change. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's so pleased when we're no longer just a doer, but we become, I mean, no longer just a hearer, but we become a doer. James said, don't be just a hearer. And then he goes on to say, deceiving yourselves. You're not deceiving God. You're not even deceiving the angels or the demons or the devil. You're only deceiving yourself when you hear the right thing to do, but you don't do it. And that's what you just said. Be a doer. Mm -hmm. Do it. Just do it. Just start speaking the word. Start standing on these verses. Get them inside your heart that he leads you and guides you and that you know his voice. John 10. Listen, everybody, if you've not read John 10 lately, because Amanda brought it up 20, 30 minutes ago. Go read John 10, the whole first half of that chapter. It is so beautiful. Go in the New Living. Go in the Amplified. Man, go get it in the Message Bible because there's just so much beauty there. Those first 10 to 12 verses where he says, I'm the good shepherd. You're the sheep. My sheep know my voice. They are not led astray by another voice. They know my voice. And you just get that inside you get it in you. You build that inside you. And you know what happens? Suddenly about four or five days later, you just get this leading, this strong unction, this witness on the inside. And you'll be like, what? That was the Holy Ghost telling me. And it just begins to build and grow. Why? The father is sitting up there smiling. He is pleased when you start believing the word. He is pleased. Um, it, it, it moves his heart. It turns his yeah. heart towards your circumstance. And I'll tell you something interesting firsthand about sheep, because we have two, we have Archie and we have Moses, is that sheep have a tendency to walk away from who they don't know. Wow. They, they literally will run away from who they don't know. If somebody goes out to try to, to get Moses inside and it's not me, he's not coming. Mm. He's not coming. He's not going to go into his barn because he doesn't know them. So interesting about sheep is, yes, they will not go or answer to who they don't know. Wow. Yeah. It's really Fun good. Fun fact. Mm -hmm. Really good. Well, praise the Lord. I think we've done pretty good tonight talking about being led by the Spirit of God, That what that witness is like. You know, just that first, that first grace out loud of just getting that established. I'm really happy with you know, how we just kind of got a lot of word out there for everyone. We did. And we, if you want, we can put the notes up on the blog, you, your yeah. blog and mine. So yeah. we can go up on Marty's Marty. If you want to give them, it would be up on loudmouthprayer.org. Is that it? Well, so that's a really good question. Um, because I, we're, we're in the middle of reprocessing our, our website right now. So I don't have that right now at this moment to put up on there. Okay, we're um, going to ours then if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Put it on yours. Okay. And then I just love to encourage everyone, if you want to see the videos or we're doing the teaching videos and the curriculum, mm -hmm. 
uh, right now, I, I man, I just started, which I haven't got to talk with you in the last few days, but we just started a new series of called praying in tongues because Jenny and I, this last Sunday, what was it just what well, yesterday or no, a week ago, Sunday, we did a, a Sunday live. We do lives at four o'clock central. Uh, and when we do the live, it's just one hour of teaching and praying, teaching prayer and demonstrating. And we did that a week ago. And so many people, we did it on praying in tongues and so many people had questions and we're really excited to hear because not, not a lot of people are going in depth on what it's talking about praying in tongues. So I just really had it in my heart to just do a series covering everything I've ever known, the truth of God's word about praying in tongues. I've done four. I've got two of them up and the next day or two, we'll have the next two up. And literally I got almost drunk in the Holy ghost. When I did the fourth one, I got so much in the spirit. I couldn't even close. I was just kind of, I just got, I got to praying and got over in the Holy ghost and got pretty excited. So it is going to be, I'm so excited. It's going to be such an amazing series, the praying in tongue series. And you can find that, you know, loudmouthprayer.org signing up there. And we shoot all those to you. And you just click on start praying today and we begin to email all the series to you. Well, that's wonderful. Yes, it's loudmouthprayer.org. And I will tell you, Marty and his wife, Jenny, are prayer warriors. We pray together, all of us at Reawaken America, over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh. of people. And it gets intense. It gets very, I tell them, this is us going to Gadaran, right? Where we're, we're oh. going out to the people. We're going out where, where the madman of Gadaran uh, you know, need somebody to cast out those demons that have been holding them uh, bondage. So, uh, and hostage basically. So yes, we have prayed together. So we have seen the power yes. of God move. The last one, yes. we started on the stage. We ended up out in the parking lot mm -hmm. and then we just spent, I actually got in the spirit of prophecy and prophesied over this, this husband and wife who live here in Tulsa and had a great word for them. We got done with that. I looked at Jenny and said, Oh, praise the Lord. We're done. That was a few hundred people. And then Sarah called Marty, Amanda needs you in the lobby. Hundreds of people. In Sarah, the lobby. We go in there and you have people everywhere. They're laying out in the lobby, right in the, you know, you're casting devils praying. And we just jumped in and it's, we were probably another 45 minutes just trying to help people receive healing, putting the power of God in them. Um, yeah. There was just a lot of people. <laughs> One woman completely came off her oxygen. She looked terrible when we prayed over her. And I saw this happen in Dallas too. A man got miraculously healed. The next day she showed up, her color was back. She had no oxygen on whatsoever. And she was sucking wind the day before. I'm telling you, like it yeah. was not a good situation. She was very pale. And you know what? She was breathing fine. She was talking. She wasn't struggling. So praise the Lord for that. So we saw quite a bit of that go on. Yeah. I just had someone email me today and they just got the email about an hour or two ago. Yeah. And uh, Jenny and I did a prayer. Um, I think this last Sunday, just for a few minutes on our, or yesterday on our live. And she prayed it with us in tons of pain. She said, as soon as I got done praying, the pain immediately went all away. Thanks God. So God is in the healing, delivering, restoring mood. He always is. That's his very nature. So that's what we're doing. That's what you're doing. Oh, by the way, I wanted to share to everyone the reason why, one of the main reasons why uh, we have Grace Out Loud is because Amanda and I, we understand so many, we agree in so many other things, but the one thing that we definitely agree is that our role as ministry gifts are to train people of God to do the work of the ministry, to train them to do prophecy, to train them to lay hands on the stick. Mm -hmm. We want we don't want to be set up on some high pedestal and everyone, oh, the great ministers are here. Oh, Lord, have mercy. My whole That's heart. Our heart. <laughs> we want to train the people of God to do ministry because that's what Ephesians 4 is really saying. Mm -hmm. That we can help teach and train you that you can do the work of the ministry, the edifying you know, edifying the body of Christ where you can do the work. And that's what's the original plan of God. That's where it kind of got off quite a bit. Everyone started looking at the ministers that the ministers were supposed to do everything and people stopped doing it themselves. And the minister, a lot of ministers allowed that they allowed that mindset because it kind of helped them be the important ones. I don't want to be, we don't want to be important. We know we're nothing. We just want to do our job and our job is to help others do the divine plan of God for their life. 
We are dust without the spirit of the Lord and his breath in us. We are dust. Uh, we, we all fall incredibly short of the glory of God. Um, we are just called to do different things for the Lord and his kingdom on this earth. And yeah. this is what Marty and I uh, have been called to do. And we've been yeah. called in the prophetic. And so we're just following the call, basically. Yeah. We're answering the call. Yeah, so absolutely. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. We are at an hour and 11 minutes, Marty. Not too bad. Another two hours will be done. So <laughs> my fourth point. No. But this has been a wonderful, yes, with gumbo, a wonderful grace out loud with gumbo. And and I know Jenny's there. She is. Yes, I know Jenny's there. <laughs> so I and Jenny, many of you saw Chris come up many times tonight and give yeah. his cameo appearances. But you know what? I and very grace. much enjoy this, Marty. And Grace. I was so blessed to see Grace light on your head. <laughs> Just come and rest on my head. Yep. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit descended like a dove <laughs> and she rested on my head. So praise the Lord. It's been pretty eventful for the, for the flagship episode. Of Absolutely. Grace Absolutely. Wonderful. And we're oh. going to be on bi-weekly. Yes. We're starting bi-weekly. So then the next time we would be on, I'll tell you, we will make the announcement anyway, but I'm just going to get the calendar up here and tell you would be Monday, November 28th. Absolutely. We will be right back with Grace Out Loud. And so we will announce. But thank you, Marty. And thank you to Jenny. Yes. And thank you and Chris and Grace. And uh, what an honor to be able to, you know, get our first show going with you. Well, it, it has been an honor, Marty. And praise the Lord. We're off and running. So. Yes. Praise God. So well, thank you, Amanda. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Marty. God bless you. You too. Okay, everyone, that concludes our first episode of Grace Out Loud. Marty is uh, an amazing teacher, and so is his wife, Jenny. And so this is going to really equip you for the time we are in. We are here to equip the body of Christ. And so praise the Lord. This is something that, you know, the Lord has opened the door for, and we're just following the leading of the Lord. I wanted to show you this because I have... Uh, <laughs> Some, some funny pictures to show you that have been from over the years. But if you go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARC, you can save up to 66% off of all MyPillow products. They have slippers, robes, pillows, of course. They are so much more than just pillows. And to show you a picture, I have two pictures to show you, okay? Here's Noble, the pig, sleeping on a MyPillow dog bed, and it says pray in the background here. That's when we were at the other house. So here's Noble on a MyPillow dog bed, and here is Duchess the pig and Wally the African gray parrot, and there is Wally's little MyPillow dog bed that is next to Duchess. So yes, our pigs, our parrots have all been on MyPillow dog beds, and they really do love them. So I wanted to show you that picture because I think it's hysterical. And so I just think we, <laughs> I needed to put it up for you. So thank you to everyone. And thank you to Marty and his lovely wife, Jenny, uh, for putting so much hard work into this. So I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your evening. Grace Out Loud will be back November 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is a Monday. Uh, we will announce when we are going to go live again. Uh, this week. So uh, stay tuned for that. We will make an announcement. And also, just so you know, we are going up on multiple platforms now. We are going to be going up on Brighteon. We are on TikTok as at Ark of Grace Ministries on TikTok. We are on Rumble as Ark of Grace Ministries. We are going, we also have another YouTube channel called Ark of Grace Animal Adventures. And you see a picture of me, Chris, and Moses uh, as a baby lamb. Uh, and so we're going to be posting a lot more to that too. So you can go uh, and subscribe to that. Instagram is Ark of Grace 88, the number 88. But we will be announcing as these platforms are up and running, uh, we will be letting you know how you can view on these platforms too. So thank you to everyone for this evening. Uh, Armor up, Ephesians 6, keep the faith. We love you, uh, and we will be back on soon. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.